and welcome to another edition of Connecting the Dots, where thought leaders, game changers, and innovators share their tips, insights, and learnings. My name is Andy Waltenspiel, and I'm running a Munich-based consultancy in the media, telco, and technology industry. Today, my guest is George Grassa, he's executive board member of Nosh Portugal. Welcome, George. Nice to have you here. Hola. Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be Great. here. Great, you can jump out of that board meeting, run down and be with us. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's easier in the virtual space. So it's, uh, you just jump from a VC to another one. So, so you're the, also the CTIO of uh, NOSH. Yes. Maybe yes. give a view as a little overview. What is NOSH? So basically we're a quadruple play operator here in Portugal. We also as a group have a very strong position in terms of the media side. So we produce also pay TV channels, and we also operate uh, cinema theaters, uh, which unfortunately during this phase are completely closed. Uh, hopefully that will change soon as well. No, um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So uh, you were telling me you were actually discussing COVID measures right now. Um, Correct. So how has it been impacting you? I think you just passed the biggest stress test in history, right? We actually faced a scenario that we never thought possible a couple a couple of months ago. That the network is like a, a living organism, so we we basically are always trying to tweak and adjust and fine tune it. And with COVID, we 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 stress test that that system to the limit, and we basically uh, brought the network into completely new peaks across every single service that we had. So I'm. I'm immensely proud of my team and uh, of everything that we were able to achieve in very, very difficult situation. So I liked your analogy of the, um, the network being like a living organism that obviously mm -hmm. you know really well on whether it's fiber, cable, doxes, TV, mm -hmm. mobile. In 5G, I think you're entering a bit uncharted territory. How will mm -hmm. things change there? Um, and how do you foresee that way for you as a telco company? 5G, I think 5G is an enabler for a new set of, um, of services. And I think it opens the door for a completely new, new positioning for a mobile operator. Uh, we will see the ability to um, tailor at a level that wasn't possible with, uh, definitely not with 3G and not even with 4G, which is mm -hmm. the ability to tailor the, the experience of the connectivity that you're providing. And that mm -hmm. opens up a completely new set of services and a completely new way of positioning yourself with regards to basically everything. In order to enable the use cases that we foresee with 5G, the, the level of connection that you need to have with my network is at, at a much deeper level. If you want to go to the level where I need to provide a service that has this type of requirements in terms of latency, or in terms of X, Y, and Z, the famous network slicing that you hear about, that entails a discussion with me, whereas previously with 4G, you didn't have to. So mm -hmm. that opens up a completely new set of, uh, of uh, opportunities and services, positioning, dialogue. Uh, so it's, it's going to be an interesting new phase for, a mobile, for any mobile operator, actually. So interesting times ahead, definitely. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> You've been yes. one of the few who have picked RDK for mm -hmm. your software platform. Would you do it again? Choose RDK? Was it the right thing to choose back then? So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a question that it, it either can be answered very quickly or in a very long, long conversation. Innovation is a key tenet of basically everything that we do. We also have some very specific requirements in terms of how much control do we have on the television service. Most of the OTT consumption is done through my platforms. So the level of control that I need to have is very, very uh, high if you compare with most of the other markets. Going into more off-the-shelf solutions, yes, I mean, they probably have faster times to market, but you give away some of that control. Portugal also has a very high penetration, above 80 something percent. So very, very high penetration of pay TV, which also means that the economics of the set-top box play a very, very important role. Because again, very competitive market, relatively high churn rates. 
if you don't control that variable of your business, uh, it just doesn't, just, it's bad business judgments. RDK gave us the answers to, to these challenges. It, was it the, the right decision at the time? Yes. I, I mean, I, I still stand by, by that decision. Um, so uh, that, okay. this was the short answer. So it's, uh, <laughs> so the, you mentioned set the box a few times. So yeah. the set the box is doomed, said to be dead since probably 10 years. So you see the set the box will have quite some life for the foreseeable future, or are you moving to TVs, all multi-screen, and the set the box will be less and less important? How do you see that? Well, the, the set of box is still a key component of my uh, my offering. The average household in Portugal expects a very high quality television service being delivered. If you, if you were talking about five percent of the population, that's a yeah. type of problem. If you're talking half of the population, that's also a different problem. If you, when you talk about eighty percent of the population, you cannot expect to have eighty percent of the population with a smart TV. Balancing yeah. these two things, that's where things become tricky. And again, we go back to that notion of control um, because it's so, it's so, it's such a key component of the, the value equation, not having control or having less control. It, it becomes a very difficult discussion on that front. Oh, well, okay. it's a necessary evil. Let me put this another way. <laughs> if I, in the sense of if I had to, to trade a neuron on a set of box versus a neuron on the network, I would definitely put it on the network. There's no question about it. There's absolutely no question on that front. So you're, you're almost preempting my famous $100 million question, which is I give you for your business $100 yes. million. What do you do with it? And you just answered it. You would put it in the network or? Yes. Um, how, how, network. All in the network. network. On the network. Yes. It would be definitely on the network. Again, think about the analogy of the living organism. It needs to be as healthy as possible. It needs to, to have the necessary flexible points. It needs to have the necessary uh, uh, capacity available um, and the ability to answer to all of these movements. So definitely, I, there's, there's absolutely, I mean, I have absolutely no doubt on, on, on that question. So you're in the, one of the most competitive television, yes. pay TV, telco markets on the planet, probably. Yes. Um, where do you see the market going in the next uh, six, 12 months? What are the big trends that you see? The next six to 12 months will be very much dictated by what we're experiencing today with the COVID situation. And from the top of my head, for example, two things that I can highlight as challenges and opportunities. Security, big, 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 big topic. I think that having to when you force yourself to everything that I do in my life is digital, the perimeter that you expose to threats that you're not as literate uh, uh, with as in a normal physical world become an issue. And most of the times I think people don't even are aware of that. Um, so big, big issue. And I think again, big challenge, an opportunity, potentially services that can build around that. And the second one, for example, whole home coverage uh, and how Wi-Fi plays a role. So one of the things that we've, that we've experienced is when you have everyone at home, uh, people tend to explore places of the home that they didn't explore before. So I, we joke that there's a, there's a, that people go to the attic, they go to the corner of the home to get some peace and quiet, and they expose the limits of Wi-Fi. And probably, again, a challenge and an opportunity for an operator. How do you handle those, the, that type of uh, issue? Wow. So uh, many different things. I think yeah. uh, we talked <laughs> about quadruple play and how you're integrating, enabling people to stay mobile, connected during COVID and beyond. Mm. The network is holding a living organism. The first time I heard that mm. was from you. Uh, very interesting view. George, mm. thank you very much for being with us. Thanks and, for having uh, me. All the best. Stay safe. We speak soon. Stay safe. Thank you.